Let's give God praise this afternoon. Come on. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We're here because he says, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Is that why you showed up today? Amen. Come on, come on. He died. Amen, amen. He hung amen. dead and died, but he rose. Come on, come on, come on. Woo amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's something to get excited about. We Hallelujah. forget. Praise God with us. Come Hallelujah. on. Anybody glad? Yes, God. Oh. The highest praise. Get the highest Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are holy. You are holy. Lord, Lord we exalt your name. Say it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You get the highest praise. Get the highest Hallelujah. 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 God, you're holy. You are holy. The highest praise. Yes, the highest Hallelujah. Praise. Hallelujah. You are holy. You are holy. Oh, Lord, Lord, we exalt your name. For you have done. For you have done great things. Done great things. Oh, for you have done great things. God, you've done. done. Highest praise.
Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we are. Yeah, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We are. We are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We are. We are. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we are. Come on, if you're glad, come on. Yeah. We are glad. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Have those hands. Which is, you're glad about what Jesus has done in your life. Come on. Lord, 
Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. If you know he's wonderful tonight, come on and celebrate him. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord on tonight. As we prepare our hearts and our minds for the word of God, amen. I'm going to pray for the man of God before he comes. Amen. And let him move in the way that the Lord would have him to move. Hallelujah. We thank you. Father God, we thank you on tonight. We glorify you. We magnify you. For this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice in it and be glad in it. Now, God, we pray, Lord, that you would settle this man of God down, Lord, in your bosom. Lord, that you would wrap him in your arms, oh God, Lord, that you would speak to him, oh God, Lord, that you would, Lord, massage his nerves tonight, God. Lord, so that he might only hear you, oh God, Lord, we come against any distractions, anything that would cause him, oh God, Lord, to get sidetracked, God, Lord, we move it out the way right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, God, let your word come forth like never before. Let it bring forth power, healing, and deliverance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us receive Elder Moss at this time. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand, hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, come on. Give God a hand of praise. If you know he's wonderful, give him a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Lift your voice unto the Lord tonight. For he is wonderful. Hallelujah. The blessed name of Jesus. Oh, we thank God for the praise team. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 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 He is wonderful. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. Give an honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Who is the head of my life. We thank God for this great opportunity. Amen. To be in the house of God just one more time. Give an honor to our dear Bishop, Bishop Mark C. McGuire. Come on, put your hands together for the man of God. Father, we thank you for the man of God, our dear Bishop. Amen. And his lovely family, we bless you for the man of God. We thank God for all of you tonight, amen, that have come, amen, for the second watch. Amen. Communion service tonight. And we just want to lift up the name of Jesus, amen. We just want to glorify him. Amen. And let him know how much we love him, how much we adore him. Amen. And let him know how wonderful we believe he is. We know him to be in our lives. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Just for a little while, I'd like to speak with you from the first Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, chapter 11 from first Corinthians. I'd like to focus your attention on verses 17 through 34. We do believe there are a few things God has blessed us with on tonight that he would have us to share. Amen. And so we just pray, amen, that your hearts would be open, amen, to hear what thus saith the Lord. Can you say amen tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting with verse 17. And it reads as follows. Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not that ye come together, not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also hearsays among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into, the, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God, and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. 
And after the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat the bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should be judged. We should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together, eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, and that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Can you say amen? amen. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, amen, and the doing of his most holy word. You may be seated, amen, in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Sister Pam. God bless you, woman of God. Hallelujah. Amen. We, how many of you were here this morning, was blessed by the word of God on this morning? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Give honor to our Lord and Savior for the bishop. Amen. And that powerful word, amen, uh, that he delivered on this morning. Amen. When it is an honor, amen, to stand uh, before God's people. And we do, uh, amen, thank God for this privilege, this honor. Uh, we thank God for the bishop, amen, who has charged me, amen, on tonight, amen, to share the word of God uh, with us, saith the Lord, amen, to the church. And so tonight, uh, I'd like for you to think on this thought tonight. We sing this all the time, and I heard it in my spirit earlier this week, and uh, uh, I believe the choir sung it this morning, amen, bless my soul. Uh, but tonight's title, if, you would, if we could title the Word of God, which the Word of God don't need a title, but just for man's sake, communion is not about us, it's about Jesus. Communion is not about us, it's about Jesus. Father God, we thank you tonight. We believe, Lord God, throughout the course of this week you have spoken. So we pray now, Lord God, that the words you have entrusted in me, you will allow them to flow through my belly, Lord God, through the byway of the Holy Spirit. Speak to your church. Speak to your people. And we pray, Lord God, that we'll leave this place better than where we came. We'll give you the glory. We'll give you the honor. Have your way tonight in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. The man and woman of God said amen, amen, and amen. Communion is not about us, it's about Jesus. Over the years, we've heard many stories about communion. Amen. Why we should take it, why we shouldn't. We left people of God so many of times in the church confused. Folk don't know what to do. Amen. What does the scripture really say about communion? Let's get an understanding, first of all, that why communion exists. The Lord's Supper is the distinctive symbol of Christian worship. It was instituted by the Lord on the eve of his death. Being spiritual, partaking of bread and the fruits of the vine, these elements are presented as a thankful, a thankful expression of Christ's sacrifice, taken in fellowship with him and with one another. It is a memorial conducted in remembrance of Christ. You know, Scripture says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Christ's atoning death and anticipating his return to the earth. I believe that the Spirit of God would have me to share tonight seven P's of communion. Seven P's of communion. According to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23 and 25, if you can put that up for me, let's read that real quick again. 
Bless your name, Lord. We want to start off with the first P, the person. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. So first of all, we need to understand, amen, the first P is the person. The most important fact involved in the table of the Lord is the Lord of the table. Come on, Holy Ghost. Uh, oftentimes, amen, we, we, we come, amen, and we take, amen, the sacraments, and we come to communion, amen, and we think, amen, uh, that taking the bread and drinking the juice is, is, is significant enough, amen, but God wants us to know that it's not about the sacraments as much as it is about Jesus. Come on, Holy Ghost. So it's the person. Our focus must, we must be focused and know that yes, it is the Lord's table, but we want to celebrate the Lord of the table. Come on, Holy Ghost. So the person, Jesus the Christ, is where we want to put our hope. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 says, I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he arose again on the third day according to the scriptures. Acts 20, verse 35, according to the King James Version, said, I have showed you all things, how that, so might, might, how that you might ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And then again in Galatians 1, chapter, chapter 1, verses 11 and 12, he said, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus the Christ. So we must first understand that it's about the person Jesus. Can you say amen? The second point I want to bring, the second P that we need to be conscious of tonight is the perversion. According to 11, 17, and 22, after their communion service, it was said that the fecal and the self-centered Corinthians had so involved themselves in the supper that they had totally ignored both other saints and the Savior. As a result, some, which we would call the well-to-do, would stuff themselves with food and drink while others, the poor, would go away hungry. Many things happened on the momentous night in the upper room. But here in verse 23 of chapter 11, Paul singles out the, the single issue about betrayal of Jesus. You remember Judas, how he betrayed the Lord? Paul pointed out in verse 23 this betrayal, which signified the fact that maybe it was a hint describing that what the Corinthians was actually doing was the same thing Judas did. Come on, Holy Ghost. And sometimes we get so caught up, amen, in what other folk is doing, and, and we get so caught up, amen, and why, amen, this person is taking it and that person is taking it, amen, and we lose our focus that it's got to be about Jesus. It's about Jesus. The third purpose I wanted to bring, the third P I wanted to bring is the purpose. Verse 26 and 28. At the Lord's table, we are to do three things. The first thing we're asked to do at the Lord's table is to look backwards. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death. Think about every time you take it, what God has done in your life. Think about how he's brought you out, amen, of some hard and some hellish places, amen. How he, amen, and set your feet on a rock to stay How, amen. He didn't heal your body, brought peace to your mind, amen, delivered your children. Think about, amen, what he's done in your past, glory to God. Look backwards. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death. 
The third point under the purpose is we need to look inward. The Bible says, but let a man examine himself. Amen. You know, amen, where you are in relation to the word of God. You ought to know, amen, where you are in relationship, amen, amen, to the will of God in your life. Amen. You know, amen, if you're walking upright before him. You know, amen, if your life, amen, is on right standing with the Lord. And if it's not, amen, get right, church, get right. In the blessed name of Jesus. We got to look inward. And then the third point of the purpose is that we got to look forward. The Bible says we ought to look forward until he comes. Amen. Because he is coming back again. Come on, Holy Ghost. I said he is coming back again. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We, we don't need to be sitting around, amen, acting as though God ain't coming back. He is coming back. Glory to God. Look forward. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Somebody say Jesus. The fourth point we wanted to bring out tonight, the fourth P out of the seven, is the partakers. This is a good one because what group is invited to the table? You know, we, we go around and around, amen, as who we believe, amen, God would have to take the supper. It is said that Christians are divided about whether or not the table should be opened or closed. The chief argument supporting open communion is that the Lord's Supper is not a ceremony of a particular religious denomination. Amen. The, the point of the matter is, my friends, is that it is the Lord's Supper. Come on, Holy Ghost. It is him that will decide, amen, who eats and who doesn't eat. It is him, amen, who will decide, amen, who he will decide to fellowship with, amen. Bishop told us on this morning, amen, those of us that have been chosen by the Father. Come on, Holy Ghost. So you got some folk arguing about, you know, the, the, the supper shouldn't be open. And then you got others who argue, who believe that the table should be restricted and that folk shouldn't be allowed to eat if they're unworthy. How, how do you decide if a person is unworthy? I, I, I mean, I, I got enough problems just looking at my own, looking at my own stuff. Come on, Holy Ghost. Yeah. I ain't got time trying, trying to figure out where, where, where you are with the Lord. Amen. I'm, I'm praying. I'm hoping, you, I'm hoping you're right with him. Amen. But I ain't got time, amen, to try to figure out if you're worthy or not. I got to get myself right. Yeah. Come on, Holy Ghost. And so those who believe the table should be restricted, they argue that the church should not allow a person to eat unworthily or to bring judgment on his own head. Closed or open communion is an attempt to have the best of both. The bishop reminds us every week, amen, that everyone uh, is in need of self-evaluation. But guess what? After the instructions have been given, my friends, amen, now it's up to you to decide, amen, if you should take or you shouldn't take. Glory to God. Bishop has given us the instruction. Now it's up to us to make sure our heart is right with the Lord. First Corinthians. Let me go back. Getting a little ahead of myself. This, how many of you know this word to get you excited? I don't know about you, but the word will put a fire up under you. Come on, Holy Ghost. It'll put a fire up under you. If you ain't right, it'll get you right. Come on, Holy Ghost. So the Lord's Supper is only for believers. We do agree on that, don't we? But it includes all believers. This would appear to be the case whether they happen to be baptized members of a church or not baptized. You know, folk want to know, you know, if you ain't been baptized, you know, if you ain't been baptized in the name of Jesus, you ain't saved. If you ain't been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, you ain't saved. All that. Look at I ain't got time for all that, glory to God. Do you know the man? Come on, Holy Ghost.
long ago. Do you know Jesus? Do you believe that he, that he died, buried, and resurrected? Glory to God. We ain't got time to be arguing about glory to God, all that stuff. Do you know him? Do you know him? So we got to be partakers. Number five, the fifth P is the prerequisite. The prerequisite is that there's two kind of individuals who are forbidden to partake. Come on, Holy Ghost. They are the unsaved and the unclean. And I hear somebody say, I told you there was some folk that shouldn't be eating it. But guess what, God, you know what? He always got a ram in the bush. He always got a lamb in the bush. Because you know what? He already knew folk were going to have something to say. But guess what he said? According to St. John 3.16, that God so loved the world. What's that? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should what? Believe in him should not what? Perish, but have everlasting life. Why is it, my friends, that we despise the very thing that God loved? If God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, who are we to tell the world, amen, you can't get in on this if you get your heart right with God? Come on, Holy Ghost. Bishop told us this morning, God so loved the world. You can't detach yourself from the world. We're in the world. We don't have to be a part of it. We're in it. Glory to God. We got to recognize there's things going on that ought to concern us, amen, to pray about folk and to lift folk up, glory to God. And that's got to draw, draw people in to the kingdom of God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that one, amen, that is unsaved, there's an opportunity to be saved. Come on, Holy Ghost. And then they said, okay, the one, okay, what about the one that's unclean? I'm glad you asked, glory to God. 1 John 1, 9. You know what the word said. The, what he was faithful and just to forgive us. Let's read the scripture. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now look at that's good news. So if you unsaved or you unclean, there's an opportunity to get right, church in the name of Jesus and come and sit at the Father's feet. The prerequisite. Well, I thank God. Look here. Lord, no, I thank you. At 1 John 1, 9. Lord, have mercy. Well, if he hadn't given us a way of escape, wouldn't none of us be sitting up in this house tonight? Come on, hold go. But his love for us, he said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. So in other words, my friends, there is no excuse to sup with the Lord. If we're not right, we can get it right right now. Come on, God. We can get it right right now. Now watch this. This number six, the P for number six is the penalty. According to 11, Corinthians 11, 29 and 30. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. This is important because unworthily, here the word is an adverb and it's not an adjective. Paul does not say that if anyone is not worthy partakes. He doesn't say if anyone who is not worthy partakes, but rather if anyone partakes in an unworthily manner. There's a difference. If you take it in an unworthily manner, then the Bible says you're bringing condemnation upon yourself. So, so we can't call somebody unworthy because we don't know what God is doing in somebody's heart. 
Amen. You can't judge a book by its cover, amen, because you don't know, amen. It might look one way that it ain't. Some things are deceiving. Folk might have been going through something, amen, when you saw them acting the fool. God might have just brought them out of something, or they might have just went into something. We don't know what the case might be. But whatever the case might be, we ought to be praying for folk. Come on, Holy Ghost. We ought to be asking God to have mercy on their life and on their soul. The second point under the penalty is damnation. In the Greek, this is the word kilomen. I'm, I'm messing it up, I know I am. But it's translated here to mean judgment. Let's look at Romans 11:33. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. All right, let's go 1 Peter 4, 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? My Lord. One more, Revelation uh, chapter 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not, y'all know my eyes is bad, had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and resigned with Christ a thousand years. Can you say amen? In each case, the same word appears. So we need to understand that there's unworthily and there's damnation under the penalty when we're dealing with communion. Finally, the number seven is the plea. Verses 31 through 34. The plea. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. I'm, I'm reminded of the scripture in the book of St. John, I believe, chapter 5 or chapter 6, where Jesus told the disciples, he said, you know the scriptures, but the scriptures are they that testify about me. You know, there were some religious folks and some of, the, or some of the folk in that time that they knew the scripture backward and forward. Amen. And they was trying to tell Jesus, you know, about what the law said. And Jesus says, you're good at knowing the scriptures, but one thing you fail to know, that the scriptures are talking about me, whom you don't know. And oftentimes, my friend, we come, amen, to the house of God to take communion, amen, and we, we think it's about the sacrament, amen, the bread and the, and the body, amen, but it's more than that, my friends. It's about relationship with Jesus the Christ. So if we should take anything away from here tonight, amen, we thank God that we have an opportunity to be able to sup with the Lord. But more than that, amen, we can walk out of here knowing, amen, that because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he abides in us and we abide in him. Can you say amen? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this great moment to get a better understanding about the word of God. Corinthians chapter 11 communion we're thankful Lord God that even if we fall under one of the two unsaved or unclean we have an opportunity Lord God to get saved and if we're unclean amen we can be washed by the blood of the lamb according to 1 John 1 9 for you're faithful 
you will forgive us of those sins that we should confess if we confess we should be forgiven and so father we do now come asking forgiveness of all of our sin all of our unrighteousness all of our evil ways and evil deeds all of our cross looking Lord God and smug and, uh, looking down our nose and, and Lord cutting our eyes at folk Lord God thinking bad things and ugly, ugly things about folk Lord God that we know nothing about Father forgive us forgive us how we fail Lord God to do what you've called us to do forgive us Lord God how we fail Lord God to go and preach the gospel to that one to get on our last nerve Forgive us how we fail, Lord God, to fellowship with you early in the morning and late at the, no at the noonday. Forgive us how we've trampled over your grace, made light of your word. Whatever the case might be, Lord God, have mercy on us. But we thank you that we can confess our faults and our sins one to another and know that you heareth us and that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wash us now, we pray. Prepare our hearts and our minds, Lord God, to sup with you, to receive from your table your body, which was broken for us the blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. Father, we thank you that you hung, bled, and died for this moment that we might enjoy fellowship with the Lord and with one another. Speak to us. Keep us forever in your care. Forever reminding us that as often as we do this, take this body and drink of this cup, we do show the Lord's death until he comes. In the blessed name of Jesus, the man and woman of God said amen 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 let's turn it over to our our deaconess